Hey guys, I have a ton of information to share with you today, so prepare yourselves for me to talk really, really fast. And also, make sure you watch until the very end because I have a ton of tips and I don't want you to miss any of them because they are all really important. First, let's talk about the different types of calligraphy. We've got faux calligraphy. You can do that with anything from colored pencils to gel pens to paint markers. Then next up, we have brush lettering with a paintbrush usually with a very thin type of paint as well. In my opinion, this one is the hardest. Next up, we have brush lettering with a marker. We're gonna be using the black version here that's on the paper today. And then I just wanted to show you a different version of the pen. So this is a Tombow brush marker that's a little bit bigger of a tip. I wanted you guys to see that as well. And then finally, we've got dip pen calligraphy or pointed pen calligraphy. You're gonna use this with a pen that has a middle nib as well as a separate ink. And you can get these in all different colors. I really love this one because it has a raised effect. That's what I'm trying to show you on this little tile here. It's like lifted, gives it a little bit of an emboss feel and makes it super luxurious feeling. So if you wanna learn faux calligraphy, I have more information on that than another video. The reason I'm not teaching it in this video is because it's just a little bit simple. But here are the basics. You're gonna draw whatever you want in you know, whatever style of lettering you want. It can be your natural handwriting. Then you're gonna thicken up the downstrokes. All you have to do to do that is just make the lines where your pen was mo moving towards the bottom of your paper thicker. Now there are some other tips that are gonna help you, but I taught that in the other video. So like I said, you can watch that for more information and I will link it below. But if you want, you can follow the, you can use that on the practices I'm teaching today and that'll be just fine. Um, if you want to learn brush lettering with a paintbrush, it is in another video. And same with dip pen calligraphy. I will, I will link all of those down below. Those are the ones we're not going to use today, but I wanted you to know they existed because they are a modern calligraphy tool that you can use. We're going to do brush lettering with Tombow Feud pens. I'm going to recommend the Tombow Feud Hard to beginners. That's going to be what I'm pointing to right here. It says WSBH. That signifies that it's the hard, and then WSBS signifies that it's soft. Both of them are great for beginners, but the uh, harder one is a little bit easier. We're gonna be using a Rodea dot pad, which has a grid pattern on it. Those are great for beginners because it's got the lines set up for you. And then they're also good for your brush pens because the paper is smooth and it's not harsh on your nibs. The first thing you wanna do is master those thick and thin lines with your pen. So you're gonna do that by one, increasing pressure on your downstroke, and two, you have to hold your pen a certain way or those thick, thin lines aren't gonna turn out how you hope. So every letter has a slant, and that is the angle that is turned. And you have to turn your marker so that the nib is facing, it's gonna be your marker, your hand, your nib, is perpendicular to the angle of your slant. So if you look at these arrows, those are the angle of my slant, and I have to turn my pen to match the angle. So I'm showing you another example. I'm gonna show you several examples. When I drew this C, the slant was up and down. So I had my pen perfectly out to the side, perfectly to the side, to create a 90 degree angle with a vertical slant. And then as you can see with the A, I had to turn my hand. Here you see an example of the L slant and the T slant, and I have to turn my hand more for the T. So hopefully you guys understand that and go back and look at those pictures more if you need to, to understand slant. Once you get that down, once you master the pen, you it'll be so easy for you. Okay, so some exercises that you want to do to master your pen, there are a ton of them. Um, but you want to master your ability to move between those thin and thick lines properly. So we've got these wavy shapes, we've got box shapes, and then kind of repeating these I shapes, uh, lowercase I, as you can see. And then we also have a zigzag shape. Like I said, there are lots of different exercises that you can do to learn that. And here are some that might be helpful to you guys. And then the purple example over there I just wanted you to see with a larger brush marker and then you guys really technically that's it you can start practicing your letters I recommend just starting to practice with your normal cursive handwriting 
Um, and by the way, we'll talk about guides later, but those little lines are guides that I've set up. So yeah, you can just go ahead and start practicing your letters, practice all different kinds of letters, um, and you can just run through the entire alphabet in its lowercase and uppercase form. And by the way, all of this is sped up, you guys. One of the major keys to being a successful calligrapher is that you're gonna go super, super slow. Now, you might gain speed as you learn and as you grow and become a better letterer, but at first, you have got to go so slow. And I will show you a slowed down clip at the end of the video. And another practice that you wanna do is to practice, come up with creating every type of letter you know, a million different versions of the same letter that you can, that's gonna expand your style, expand your ability, expand your creativity, and it's gonna give you more options as a hand letterer. So make sure that you're getting that in. And then like I said, technically that's it. There's two rules to being a modern calligrapher. Thicken up those downstrokes, um, and then whatever rules you need for the pen that you're using, which will vary. But there are gonna be some tips that will help you uh, get better results, and I'm gonna share those with you now. So there are some guides that'll help you, and a guide is something that you're gonna follow when you letter so that it helps you have proportional letters and it, it helps you know how you can be more consistent where your letters need to hit on these different lines. So right now I'm drawing out the word hey, and as you can see, I am focusing the bottom portion of the letters on the baseline. So the first line that you need to know is the baseline, and that is obviously where the bottom of your letters sit. The next line that I'm drawing here is called the midline, also sometimes referred to as the X height. This is gonna tell you where your standard lowercase letter is going to hit. Also, um, and it's, it got its name because it's where the lowercase x lies, but it's also gonna be your C's, your A's, stuff like that. Then you've got your D sender, which is the line I'm labeling now, and your A sender. These are for stems that jut off above and below your lines. The A senders are also for capital letters. Now, normally there are A there are multiple A sender and D sender lines. For example, you might have two D senders because an F wouldn't fall as low as a G. Um, so yeah, you can have multiple and as you advance, you can add as many guides as you want for the purposes of beginner modern calligraphers. I say we just go with the four basics. Okay, and then next, the next tip is to be consistent. So I'm writing out the word barbaric here. Now, when I say consistent, I mean with letters in the same word and letters in the same alphabet. So as you can see on the left, I've got, you know, the B's, the A's, the R's are the same style. And you can keep that same style running through the entire alphabet as, you know, as well as within a composition piece that you're doing. Say you're doing something for a print or something like that. On the right side, we've got a bunch of different styles together. In my opinion, that makes it look a little bit less clean and it makes the font more playful. So you might wanna do that sometimes, you know, stylistically, if that's when you, what you wanna do, that's absolutely fine, um, but for the most part, we wanna be consistent within our alphabets. And then you wanna do the same thing with your slant. You wanna keep the same slant when you're writing within your alphabet, and usually within your composition piece too, unless it's the style that you're doing that calls for different um, slants. But like I said, it, it looks cleaner and more professional if you keep the same slant throughout your pieces and throughout your alphabet. Next tip I have for you guys is to sketch. You can sketch individual letters and you can sketch your compositions as well. And you definitely wanna use a ruler and, erase, and an eraser. That's gonna give that professional edge to your, your work. Authors don't write books without rough drafts. You know what I'm saying? So give yourself the benefit, give yourself the advantage of a rough draft. Get your ideas on paper and play around with different shapes so that you can expand. And then finally, like I said, you want to go slow. This is the absolute best tip for beginners. I know a lot of times when we start something new, we kind of have a tendency to want to rush. Going slow is going to give you the results that you want. And you might, you'll definitely gain speed over time, but you want to build skill before you build speed. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Leave me any questions you have in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.